Well, this part of the IP chemistry syllabus is a real mess, uh, but I'm going to do my best for you. When all the videos are done, there'll be nothing missing. So hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride, well, those are two halogens there. And if I write down the boiling points, the hydrogen fluoride has a higher boiling point than hydrogen chloride. So it needs more energy to pull hydrogen fluorides apart from each other, from the liquid phase into the gas. Now, both of these molecules have dipoles, but the dipole in hydrogen fluoride is much stronger. That's why it's harder to boil it. It needs more energy to boil it. Now, the special sort of strong dipole is called a hydrogen bond, and those are stronger than regular dipole-dipole interactions. So hydrogen bond is a special dipole. It's special because it's stronger. So if I have two hydrogen fluorides there, the hydrogen bond will be between... For example, a hydrogen on one molecule and a fluorine on another. Those dotted lines represent one hydrogen bond. They're a special sort of dipole. Why are they special? They're strong. F, O and N are the three elements that uh, bond with hydrogen to make hydrogen bonds. That's Thai for rain. That's how I remember it. Fon thok makup. Thai for rain is fon. <laughs> Arabic for rain is shitter. That won't help you. So let's look at uh, water and hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen bonds in water and only dipole-dipole in hydrogen sulfide does have a dipole, it's a bent molecule. And there is some attraction between one hydrogen sulfide and the next, but it's not as strong as the hydrogen bonds in water. So the boiling point of water is 100, and hydrogen sulfide, well, that's kind of the eggy smell that you might have when you break wind, and that's a gas. Well, at least I hope it's a gas. Jeez. So let's look at ethanol, and that is an ether there. Now, you don't need to know the name of the ether on the right, and I can't remember it. You don't need to know it. Now, these are isomers. They have the same formula, but they have different structures. So these are going to have different boiling points. Ethanol, you can see, has the ability to make hydrogen bonds, but that ether there, no hydrogen bonds. There is no hydrogen connected to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Now, in yellow, that oxygen-hydrogen bond, that isn't a hydrogen bond. Don't fall for that. The hydrogen bonds are between one molecule and another molecule. They're intermolecular, not intramolecular. Those are covalent. We're not going to break those when we boil it. We just have carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen left. So the ethanol has hydrogen bonds. They're a special sort of dipole. They're stronger. And so that explains why ethanol has the higher boiling point. The ether also has a dipole. But there are no hydrogens connected to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. So there's no hydrogen bonds in ether. All right, then. So let's look down group five. Here's a little thing for you. If you were to drop dead in a swamp, then the phosphorus in your bones and the anaerobic environment of the swamp would form the chemical PH3, which the IB wants you to know about. It's a reducing environment. Hydrogen's added. Now, PH3 will react with itself as it passes through the soil to form diphosphorus tetrahydride which spontaneously lights up and explodes on contact with air, leaving a white smoke behind. This white smoke is tetraphosphorus decoxide. I guess that's why people might think there could be a ghost, you know? That's one of the ways that when people die in swamps, they might think there's a ghost. Whoosh! A big flash. Jeez. All right, then. So this one's, again, pretty obvious. It's hydrogen bonds are beating dipole, dipole. All of the ones we've done so far are specifically mentioned in the syllabus. So let me just draw that out for you. The hydrogen bonds are between the hydrogen in one molecule and the nitrogen in the next molecule. Those two dashed yellow lines represent a hydrogen bond. These three chemicals... Well, the top one is propane. It's an alkane. The second one is ethanol. And the final one is ethanol. Now, their molar masses are about the same. 
The top one only has van der Waals. The middle one's dipole dipole from that C double bond O and hydrogen bonds on the final one. So how do you think the pattern of the boiling points is going to go? Well, the lowest boiling point is at the top and the highest is at the bottom. Finished.